All right, so uh, let's move on to the Future Stars game, which you um, you covered. You had a little good look at this. So for those people that don't know what the Future Stars game, um, what what is that? Uh, so it's just next year's draft class. So obviously we, we, we get a decent look at, at 2023's class throughout the year with national champs, um, you know, the, whether it's Coates Talent League or their respective uh, under-18s leagues in the sample or Waffle or what have you. Um, this is just for next year's draft. Mm -hmm. So uh, while a lot of these players would have still featured in the national champs or some of those other competitions, it's kind of just a one that I guess scouts can look at 12 to 13 months out from the draft yeah and a nice little curtain raiser yep. um it's not too late in the year that we're you know and where you know if a player gets injured if this is for this year's draft that they, there's a good chance they miss the start of next season so by now a lot of this year's draftees have put their feet up and can kind of just look forward to the draft and hope that they've done enough and they'll do interviews and stuff so um a lot of yeah kind of you know familiar surnames in this game and mm -hmm. we'll go through some of them in a sec but yeah just as a general explainer it's just under an under 17s game players pick from every state and territory um and like i said it's just kind of a, an early look in before we kind of get stuck into the draft class of 2024 in a few months yeah and it's team selwood versus team nat Nui. yeah so they, they kind of just pick a couple of, of guys that I don't think either Joel Sold or Nick Nadanui were actually coaching. They just mm -hmm. met with the players the night before and I think Mark McVeigh was among the coaches uh, for one of those sides. But yeah, they're just a, a little bit of branding there for, for the teams. And um, team Nadanui came with a win, a narrow win. Uh, team Selwood kicked the last, I think, three or four goals to really bring it down to the wire. Um, and they yeah, the team Nadanui held on. Yep. All right. Well, let's go through this list. So yeah, a couple of um, pretty familiar names. So Ben Camparelli. Yeah, he got best on all honors. So I think last year Dan Curtin did that WA prospect, who's yeah. probably going to go top two, top three this year. So Ben Cambrelli, son of Scott, um, so eligible for Carlton as a father-son selection yep. uh, next year. So one to look forward to Carlton fans: thirty touches, eight rebound, fifties, uh, eight marks, playing wing, half back, offers plenty of outside run, good ball use. Twin brother as well, Lucas. So it could be a double delight for Carlton in twelve months' time. <sighs> he had nineteen touches and nine marks as well. So they they were on opposing teams. Cambrelli playing for team that Nui um, and Lucas sorry playing for for team Selwood yep um, and yeah both among their, their best their, their side's best but um, Ben was the, the standout and deservedly got uh, best on ground a few other familiar sur uh, surnames Levi Ashcroft who a lot of people will obviously know already um, yep. having p teamed up with brother Will last year in Sandringham's premiership side and will be the son of, uh, is the son of Marcus Ashcroft and will probably be at the Lions. He's already trained with the Lions and, and it didn't take Will until I think maybe August last year to yep. kind of say, yep, I'll be I'll be heading to Brisbane and I don't, I'm not sure if Levi's had that same decision yet, but he can kind of be expected to. So much like his brother, probably a bit of a bigger build and I, I think he could be just as good. Um was as a you know 16 year old in that Sandringham premiership side last year again was probably their best player this year and led them to a premiership so I wouldn't have thought it's happened before but he could be a three-time talent league premiership player right. before he gets drafted which is absolutely absurd so he had 26 touches five inside 50s um kicked a nice goal on the run yeah uh he had kind of missed a, a shocker from right in front set shot which um, probably would have hurt a little bit, but that, that came after a really good overhead mark. So that you yeah. take what you get from these games and, so and just some highlights. Does he play a sort of similar role? Yeah, um, inside, midf as yeah, inside yeah. midfielder, um, very clean with his hands, um, knows how to find the ball. So um, yeah, an Ashcroft clone yeah. with your younger brother. So yeah, you're getting uh, much out of that. A few other similar, um, familiar surnames, so Sid Draper, yep. younger brother of uh, Collingwood's Arlo Draper from South Australia, one of probably one of the top five prospects again, a tall midfielder, um, well balanced, agile. He was one of um, the best for Team Nat Nui in that win. Taj Hotton as well had a really good first, I think, half. He kind of faded off late. I'm not sure if he featured too much in the second half, but he was really bright early. Scoreboard impact had about 13 touches to half time. So he's the younger brother of St Kilda's Ollie Hotton. But yeah, uh, along with Dra Draper in that Nat Nui midfield, Jagger Smith, another guy, midfielder who's just flashy. Um, pretty light framed and and you know, doesn't carry too much weight and probably will look to add to that over the next 12 months. But um, yeah, really just a smart, clever, cunning footballer. Leo Lombard um, featured in 
uh, Gold Coast to VFL win as yep. a 16-year-old, which is absolutely amazing. Um, and Dex certainly didn't look out of place. So he's a Gold Coast Academy kid and Josh Smiley as well. So there are a lot there. It's a very mid, crazy. midfield. 16. Yeah, it's a very midfield heavy uh, draft class. And that's why I think this was going to be a really interesting battle inside midfield. So all those mm-hmm. kids were playing for Team Nat Nui and, and yeah, were exceptional. Um, a few other guys kind of point out. Xavier Lindsay was good off halfback. Malachi Champion, um, you know, creative little uh, live wire forward. Murphy Reed, who was another one from that Sandringham side. Um, was impressive and then Tom Gross and Isaac K- Keiko I think it's how you pronounce it had a couple goals each got, Gross could have had a, a few um, extra sh- extra goals he kicked I think two goals three so he could have had a big bag if it was accurate and Keiko a um, couple goals early a nice one as well I think he's Essendon's next generation academy so one for Bombers fans to look out on and then um, another father son Tyler Welsh 10 disposals, four marks, and, and kicked a goal. So son of Scott Welsh, um, former Adelaide player. So he'll be father-son eligible next year, and it looks like a really good pickup, um, potentially top 10 for the Crows. So a bit, yeah, a bit to work with there. Um, and like I said, just just an early glimpse, and you kind of mm-hmm. get a good idea of, of the best players in this draft class going at it uh, head-to-head. Yeah, it looks like a, the next couple of years are going to be a good, like, brother pairings. There's, a, there's a few, yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, like I said, yeah, the... Ashcroft brothers are going to be huge yeah. for them when you already consider what their midfield group looks like and given that they just made a grand final. Yeah. Um, yeah, significant. Yeah. Man, that'd be nice. Especially like, yeah, coming off the back of the day, Costas winning a premiership together and, mm. yeah, yeah, there's a lot of <laughs> lots to look forward to there. Um, yeah, interesting stuff. Um, future stars. Um, so, obviously, Camparelli, uh, best on ground there. Ashcroft, yeah, a couple of big names. So, um, lots to look forward to.